thinking like last night was our first chance to spend time together and Holly and I had the privilege to have dinner with you guys. And a lot of things you said got me thinking. We're going to talk about them now too because it's like this is like the to be continued, but you know, one of the things was not that we have everything in common, but one thing we have in common is we we both okay, started something that was scary. Yeah. And we both named it something that was weird at the time. Yeah. Like when I named the church Elevation, everybody told me it sounds like a youth group. It doesn't sound like a church. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, it actually sounds like a U2 world tour. And then, uh, <laughs> and, and then uh, when you named it Fear of God, did everyone tell you this will never work? Was it a, a moment of you having to believe? Well, I, I, it was, I was... I had the confidence to call it fear of God because at a time there was like a lot of religious symbolism within fashion. None of it had true foundation or true depth. And so I I saw that I could sneak in with this. Right. um, But really provide you with um, um, the the meat of of what what, um, is, is happening right now in fashion. There was like crosses everywhere and... Givenchy had like you know Jesus's uh, Jesus saves tees and um, um, and it was kind of in, right. but no one was really providing the message behind all that. And so, in in coming up with the the brand fear of God, I liked it because you know if you don't know God, there's a real fear of Him, and if you do know Him and you're rela- in relationship with Him, you're at peace with Him and you fear nothing. Mm. And I liked. I like that, like, gangsterness <laughs> uh, about it. And so much of Christianity sometimes lacks the, the gangsterness of really how tough this walk is. And I, and I wanted to, um, you know, to, to really um, kind of celebrate that side of Christianity that sometimes is, is overlooked. And we were doing a devotion with my parents, and I've, I've told this story before, and we were talking about clouds and darkness around the kingdom of God, and then, um, the darkness just spoke to the layers and depths to him. And I really love that visual of him. Yeah. And so always kind of thinking about that in the back of my mind and, and designing and, and uh, coming up with um, um, the stories around the collections. Are you primarily visual like that in the way that you think about God? Oh, man, you said you weren't going deep, man. Yeah, we went deep quick. Jeez. I don't know what happened. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah. This is why I didn't want to do this, man. I was worried about this. <laughs> but we're so glad you did. We're so man. honored to have you. All right, I'll back it down. I'll back it down. No, we'll come back right. to that. It's no, okay. let's slow down. Let's slow down. It's you're okay. right. You're right. This pace I, is off. It's I, Monday. I, I preached all weekend. And my uh, you're, 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 you're and still I'm stuck on. in sermon mode. Yeah, I'm still in sermon mode. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Yes. It's, it's the glimpses that I get of him that move me the most. And so I don't know that I see him visually all the time, but when I do, it's, it's, it, it, it comes with such a heavy conviction that, um, you know, I can move mountains. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. And so, um, so, you know, we, we kind of talked about this too, and it's in, in being in relationship with him, you're in, in being creative, you're, um, you're, 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 you're just waiting for those glimpses. Yeah. You're waiting for those images, and you're waiting for that, for those things that drop in your spirit that you know are going to direct and lead you um, far beyond uh, your own imagination. How does he give you glimpses? What does it feel like? What does it seem like? <laughs> um, it's, it, it's never a glimpse of how it's going to happen. It's always a glimpse of like what it's going to look like in the end. Um, and it's in the how it happens that requires the faith and requires him to show up to get us to what he showed you. <laughs> and, um, and, and in those times, and even though you know that you're leaning on him to lead you, you're still required to go to the end of yourself where he can meet you. You still have to do the work. You still have to to get up and you still have to, you know, get to the studio, get to the office and, um, you know, run a team and do the things that you're called to do. Um, but there is a, um, I don't want to say security, there's a, there's a peace in knowing that um, 
the, the weight is being carried by him. Hmm. I love that. And God is really short on details. Yeah. A lot of the time. <laughs> Because I think if he showed us details, one, we would be so scared we probably wouldn't start, or we would depend on ourselves, and we would depend on the plan, mm -hmm. you know, but it's almost like he likes to give Abraham, you remember the, the Bible story where he says, go to the land I will show you. It's like, well, that's not very, like, how do I put that in my GPS? Yeah. And so have you ever felt like that? You know, I know a lot of you are wondering this. How many of you are starting a business or there's something creative that God has put in your heart um, that you only feel like you have just a small glimpse of right now in your life. Just let me see your hand. So I think there is a misconception that God shows you everything yeah. and that it is a download. And um, I bet it wasn't really like that for you as you journeyed through your 20s and the places God took you and the misdirection that was involved. So yeah. How did it look for you between the point where God began to show you what you were doing now, and how, does it, how is it different than what you imagined it would be when you started on the journey? Oh, man, it's, um, it's, it, it's maybe the wrong answer, but it's, it's a lot like what I thought it would be, you know, because he, he drops in, in your spirit, hey, this is what you're, you are to do. Um, and once you start walking in it, it it's it's like um, it's like drinking water for the first time. It's like this thirst where you just want to continue to drink from him, and you just you want to get in rhythm with him, and you want to get in this dance with him because you you know that the vision came from the manufacturer, and the only way to. Uh, materialize what he's given you is to stay in touch with him. And so um, um, what, I'm, what I feel like I'm walking is, is a lot what I felt like he showed me. Hey, if this is of me for you, then I'm going to be along the ride with you. Um, and I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to be right there with you. Wow. And so um, I, I, I've always known in my life that I was going to be an example for him in whatever it is that I was going to do. And I never knew that I was going to be doing clothing. I mean, I worked retail my whole life and went and got my MBA and thought I was going to be working in sports. And I did work in sports, but it was all those uh, unconscious hours of working retail and being on my feet and helping people, you know, helping people buy jeans or whatever, whatever it is that um, would was downloading in my spirit what, it, what was going to be to carry me today, you know? And so um, uh, I, I, I don't like the, to use the word creative in what I'm doing. It's more of... Yeah, why not? I, I think it's more obedient. This is called creative team night, so that's kind of a, a downer. <laughs> I, 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 obedient I, team night. I think <laughs> attendance would shrink. <laughs> From a branding perspective, just, you know? I, 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 obedient team night. Eh. What else you got, you know? <laughs> but I thought that was so interesting when you told me you don't really like to think of it as creative. I think it's just being available. I think it's being available. I think it's being obedient. Yeah, great it's... series title. <laughs> <laughs> to, to talk about uh, yesterday, yesterday morning's uh, message, but, you know, just being, being available, man, being willing, being willing to bring him with you in, in certain places where other people may, may not bring him. But that's a key um, distinction. That's not just a semantic thing. It's you're, you're looking at it a little bit more like you're a vessel rather than you're the oil. You're looking at it a little bit more. Because like I know, I, I know where, the, where the ideas are coming from. You know what I mean? I know, I know they're getting dropped in my spirit. I know they're coming from above. I know it's not me. I know, you know only he could write that, mm -hmm. that, that story and only he could you know, have me be a stock boy in diesel in the late 90s for years and, and, and plant those seeds that I would use, you know, 20 years later. But I bet you did that with all of your heart. You didn't see that as a means to an end at the time you were there. I was there. I was there. And I, you know, I, I mentioned this yesterday. My, my sister used to be a soul cycle instructor and now she's going on to start her own thing. But she always says, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. And I, I think it's really 
key in discovering your creativity is a, a big key of that is honoring the work in front of you. You know, you can't look past the small things because your hope is on something bigger and the small things are preparing you for, for what that thing is, you know, down, down the line. And, um, um, you know, I, I think I've, I've, I've always, you know, honored, you know, the small things that, that, that I've been given. And, um, and I, I think that maybe comes from, the, you know, the way that my parents raised me and maybe I got to give those props to my mom and dad. And, um, but, you know, I think as we're here thinking about creative night um, and being creative in your respective fields, I think whether you're finance and whether you're a designer, everything that we do requires creativity and creativity is really just another term for God showing up. You know, it's just like, all right, God, how do you show up to give me the solution to <laughs> solve this problem? Come on, man. You know, and all problems re require a creative solution. And it doesn't have to be fashion or art or design that comes across as creative. You know, you got to be creative in paying the bills to take care of your kids. You know, you got you to gotta be... <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I think it's just being open to the Holy Spirit. So good. Being, like, creative is not a category. No. Fashion is creative. Music is creative. But being a mom is not creative. Exactly. Or yeah. an administrative role is not creative. It's, it's almost like we have relegated creativity to certain tasks, and God never does. Did you ever read that thing, and I don't know if I'm going to get this right, that the first person that is mentioned to be filled with the Holy Spirit in the Bible or the Spirit of God was someone who was an architect, not someone who was a worship leader. Mm. And we use Spirit-filled to talk about people who are on the stage or people who preach, but the first person who was designated as Spirit-filled was a builder, and really not even an architect, more of a construction worker. So mm. I think our categories often don't apply to a God who is creator. And I think that's a, a, a really powerful thing. I think you should say more about that. It's really good. That creativity, yeah, that creativity isn't the right of a certain group of individuals who do a certain type of work. Like, we need to like bring creativity to the people, you know, like democratize creativity, you know, like set it free for all of God's children. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love that, and I, and I think it's, and I'm, I, I didn't know that, but I just love that, that it was, it's in the work, and I think he just honors us when we, when we, when we, when we do the work, you know, when we're, when, we're, when we're putting everything that he's given us into um, what he's given us, and um, um, that's why I just get a little, like, shy around talking about creativity in, in what I do when I've seen my mom be creative and how she um, would shop for antiques and decorate our home when we didn't have money. And yeah. it's felt like a, you know, like a, you know, a luxury home. But, you know, she did it on a check to check um, paycheck. And um, I, I've, I've seen what we considered beautiful creative things like architecture and paintings and things outside of my um, physical capacity um, that I look at in, in awe. Um, and I think I'm, I've been blessed to be, you know, to have a point of view. I think what separates me from others within my industry is I, I, I know what I'm proposing and I'm, I'm clear on that and I'm, I'm clear on where I get that direction from, and that allows me to um, to appear as if I'm really creative. <laughs> but I really just have a strong point of view. I really just have a strong proposition and a and a very um, exact outlook on how um, I want my campaigns, on how I want my designs, on how I want certain things to fit, on how I want the fabrics to feel. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't know that that's creative. I think that's more of just kind of like having a point of view. Yeah. And one thing you told me last night, it's like demystifying it. A lot of people would want to know where you get your ideas from, 
but maybe they really don't because maybe it's not as really sexy or as glamorous exactly. as people think. Yeah. You know, the process we, we, were, we were sharing, and I think Desiree and Holly were both complaining that both of us are horrible to watch movies with <laughs> or TV shows because Desiree was saying that Jerry will pause the movie and 45 minutes later come back. Am I getting this right? Because he'll see something in the 80s movie that will inspire him. So it's almost like I got the feeling from that that his antenna is always up and it never shuts off and that he's always, is that right? Like assuming that God is always speaking through all kinds of things, not just in one, one format. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, I, I think one of the things that I found for me is just to like always be open. And if I'm going to have something on TV, you know, and, and my wife will tell you, if I'm going to have something on in the morning, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, it's a YouTube message. It's, it's yourself. It's Jake's. Um, and it's how am I taking um, these messages and applying it to my work? And you and start your day that way every day every with day, a sermon. Every day. First thing. Every day. Because my work needs foundation. My work, my work needs like a, a reason of why I'm, I'm doing it. And on the... On the point of view side, on the creative side, like I know right now as I'm developing Seventh Collection, like I'm looking at a certain era. So if I'm home just watching TV, like I can't afford to just be watching TV. I got to have a movie on from that era. I have to have something on from that era that I might, you know, see a, a collar, like yes, or I might see something styled a certain way. And um, yeah, I think it's, you know, Does just. Does drive you crazy? Like, I can't turn it off. I can't turn it off. Do you get to that point? Um, I don't, I don't get to that point. Really? I, I think I'm just constantly open. I'm not constantly looking, but I'm constantly open. I see. I think, it would, you know, it would like, that's why I love vintage shopping. If I go vintage shopping and I'm like trying to find something, I never find it. But if I go without like an idea of what I'm looking for, it's like I'll, I'll come home with 20 bags of references of like, this is what I'm going to do. And so I think it's like more so trying to stay open versus like trying to find it. That's a big distinction. Open versus actively forcing an idea. It's just kind of like, okay, if something wants to come, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, and, and when it comes, then the, you know, the, the, the activity starts. You know, once you find it, then you got to work to, 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 to uh, materialize that idea, and the work does start then. So um, it's almost like, hey, God, if you want to drop anything today, I'm your guy. Yeah. Like if there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's blueprints. I, or, I'm, I'm your, and I'm going to promise to honor you through this idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to give you the glory. Just give me the idea, please. <laughs> right, right. So right. Um, selfishly, God, give me this you know, idea what to do with the collection. Um, but he loves that. That's a part of how he relates to you. You know, he knows how he wired you, and he loves to be in that collaboration with you, huh? It's like that's his pleasure to communicate with you in that way, through the, whether it's Back to the Future or a Bible verse. You know, he, he wants to speak to us in those ways. And mm -hmm. when we don't let him, it must be frustrating for him because I had so much I wanted to show you. It was all around you, but you weren't, you weren't looking. Your eyes were... Yeah, and, and I think that's the point too, man. It's like... I'm, I'm, I'm more scared of, of, of not being available to him to what he wants to show me. So it's like I have to like make sure that I'm constantly open to what it is that he wants to show me and where he wants to lead me. And, um, you know, I, I had someone asked me a question, aren't you scared to be promoting God the way that you're doing or that have him involved in your, in your work? And, and like, I'm scared not to have him. You know, I can't imagine him not being involved, you know. What would you list as one of your most embarrassing failures that people in the room might not know about because we probably haven't seen those? But did you, here's what I'm really trying to ask. Have you ever thought something was from God only to find out like, wow, that really didn't work? Or if it was from God, he was just trying to teach me how to fail or, you know, tell me a story like that, because I think a lot of us are encouraged by hearing the failure stories more than the success stories, so we know that we're not the only ones. So. I mean, I think so much of what I have done is, has been failures. You know, so much of what I've done that's led me here has um, been, in the world's eyes, you know, misses. And I think that um, it's the one who takes everything and, what was the song, uses it for good. You yeah. know, I, I think he finds a way to 
to use what we thought was a failure and, and use it for his good. And I think we, we talked about this a little bit. Um, I, I put more trust in my intention and the heart and the spirit of what I'm doing versus the product. And we were, were talking about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, we, we've been watching a lot of these Christian movies like uh, Breakthrough and Overcomer and, um, you know, nothing against these movies and that the, the acting is just not, you know, it's not Oscar. <laughs> it's not Oscar acting. Um, Very well said. Very diplomatic. But I'm, I'm in tears the whole movie. And um, I was like, man, this is such a great revelation. Like, as long as the spirit is right, you don't have to be so worried about the intricacies of what you're doing if the intention and the spirit of what you're doing is right. And so my focus is on, you know, the premise, the spirit of it. And that's why it's so, it was so important for me to, you know, to use here as in heaven within that atmosphere space. You know, it's yeah. so important to, you know, hallelujah from below, like with that, because it grounds it with the right spirit. And mm-hmm. it's, in the end, I'm really just trying to, to share that, you know, and I know the collection's good enough that it'll do okay. I know my point of view's strong enough. It's not the best in the world, but it'll do fine. But what's most important is the intention and the spirit of that. And so, um, I'm, I like to try and land above opinion. And I think the only way to land above opinion outside of time and space is to um, mix in the one that is outside of time and space. So. <laughs> All right, you still didn't tell us about a failure. I, I, I just, I, I can't think of one. I mean, but I, I mean, again, like... I got a few I can loan you from my life. <laughs> The, the good thing about fashion is like before I, you know, land on a sweatpant, there's about 20 <laughs> failures before you see this one. And so it's a, it's a lot of failure. It's a lot of sampling. And I'm not, um, I don't sketch. I, everything I do is 3D. And so I spend a lot of money in developing and sampling to get to the right piece. And so before I get to the right piece, every piece before that is, is a failure. But I'm convicted of the solution that's going to lie in the right piece that I'm going to keep going through those failures to like get to this perfect sweatpant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The last time I came out to speak at this event, uh, one thing we talked about is how every process, no matter how much you love that process or feel called to it, will have a part of that process that you absolutely despise. You know, anything that God gives you to do, there will be a percentage of it thousand percent that you hate and I wonder what part is that for you in what you do it's being CEO you know I'm I I, I love coming up with ideas and I love you know storytelling and the campaigns and the styling and um, coming up with the collections but 80 percent of my time is like being CEO and it's you know dealing with HR issues and finance not getting along with uh logistics and, um, you know, sales and uh, production department and productions late and, you know, all the nuances of, of dealing with people. Um, <laughs> you work for people. <laughs> Can't stand these people. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant... I know what you mean. As, as, far as, <laughs> as far as trying to run a team that's outside of what I feel like is my, like, core competency, what I'm really good at. And yeah. so... Yeah. Um, you know, those are the really tough things that I'm, that I'm learning. And so that's the, the other part of what I do is I wish I could just creative direct and come and, you know, hey, I'm feeling purple and, <laughs> you know, send, give me purple ideas. I'll be back tomorrow to pick the best purple. I, I don't get to do that. You know, it's like a lot of what I do is like way beyond that and right. outside of kind of what I'm really good at. Um, my dad was a, uh, to me, one of the best managers in baseball history. <laughs> and uh, and I, I learned a lot from him, you know, because he he never looked at stats, stat sheets and he never really um, uh, looked at the surface obvious things that could tell a story. He was always looking for, again, intention. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he was reading Gandhi and he was reading Malcolm X and he was reading Martin Luther King and, and taking that information and taking those tools and using that to help, you know, direct and manage a baseball team. And that's why, like, I find myself, like, making sure that I feed myself in the mornings because, you know, it's that word that I'm going to get from you that's going to help me figure out how to manage my team, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, uh, you know, every... Every every gift or everything that appears as 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 if the gift as is as if it's a gift requires a lot of work that is uncomfortable, and and it's in that uncomfortable space is when you you know you really find what you're what you're made of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know I I don't want to tell this whole story, but I had a guy a few years ago who was asked to describe my ministry. He was a theologian. And uh, he said, uh, unqualified. And he said my whole, you know, my whole life in that one word, unqualified. And I'm like, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've always felt that way. I imagine, I was thinking about you a little bit today, you know, just some of the things that we talked about. I was thinking, I bet Jerry has had to fight that battle, especially since you didn't come through the expected route. A lot of people would think you went to fashion school. They wouldn't understand that you know, the diesel route to, yeah. being, to being one yeah. of the greatest designers uh, that is working today. So do you battle with that, like they call it, imposter syndrome or fraudulence complex and that feeling? Does that come to you? What do you do with it? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like shied away from even the, the title of designer. and I didn't feel worthy of that. And um, again, I don't, you know, I don't sketch. And I don't consider myself artistic. And, you know, my grandfather used to, uh, cut hair and he would, you know, he was a carpenter also and he, you know, he built houses, the house my dad grew up in, my grandfather built it with his hands, um, something I could never do. And so I've always felt unqualified, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I believe that God always puts us in rooms that we're not qualified for so that he can show up. And I think that um, it's it's in those rooms that... Um, that you have to to trust him, and your your um, your character can either keep you in that room or can get you out of the room. And so, a, a, a lot of times when I feel un, unqualified, my focus goes to okay, well, how was my how, how am I at the core of who I am in this right. position? You know, it's like, it's like going to Nike and designing my own shoe with Nike instead of coloring up something. I was not qualified for that by um, designer terms, but I was qualified for that because I was willing. And so in that position, I, I'm just constantly reminded of, of who has me there, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm, I have this new uh, project that we're working on in Italy that I can't really speak on, and I feel in over my head. Ooh. And uh, Proprietary. <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's, it's beyond my work but I know that God has me there. You like that feeling when something is beyond you like that? I, I like it. I mean, I, I grew up playing sports and I've, I've never been the best at anything, but I could always compete. You know, I'll, you know, I, I'm, you know, if we're going to 21, I'll probably get 20 on you. You might get me, but I've always been the one to compete in everything that I can play in. And so yeah. I have that, that fight in me. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just that constant reminder of, of knowing who has me. In these, in these certain spaces and, and why I'm there. Um, and that kind of helps the uncomfortability of, of being in these um, uh, super intimidating positions. You got my mind spinning right now. I want to make sure I remember all, all of these things. Okay, what's the balance between letting God take you places and then having the ambition to knock on the door yourself? How have you found that play out in your journey? Um, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's I speak on the Nike thing, you know, the, the, the ask was to kind of help them with performance basketball and maybe playing with some, some older silhouettes and using fear of God styling to kind of um, bring the basketball category back to the forefront. And I just had a conviction that it was, you know, it, it, it needs to be a new idea. You know, the, 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 the solution isn't in the styling, the solution is in the shape. You know, the solution is in, 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 a, in a new thing. 
And I was willing to not do the collaboration if I couldn't honor it from what I felt was the best way to honor it. And I think sometimes being willing to walk away from what looks like a great opportunity if you can't honor it the way that you know that God has gifted you to honor it. And I just said, you know, this is what I could bring here. (laughs) This may not be what you were looking for, but this is what I'm gifted at. This is what I'm good at. And I don't know where I got that. that, I just don't want like a worship leader at Elevation to use that against me. Like, this is the song God has gifted me to sing. (laughs) If you don't like it, I will sing it at Forest Hill. No, whatever. Um, um, Contentment and ambition. I think about this a lot. Like, they're both in the book of Philippians, right? Like, learned whatever state I'm in to be content. And then Paul's like, I press toward the mark. It's like, well, which one is it? Yeah. You know, do you ever think about this? How many of you are over 30? And uh, how many of you are between 20 and 30? And then how many of you are 14? Elijah and Jet should be the only one. <laughs> Where are you boys at? Yeah, you have to decide, like, in your life along the way, um, should I be content here? Or is God calling me to stretch? And, and I really think that's a tension. Like, we can't solve that talking I would love to hear how you process it because the feeling that, and look what God has done through your life, it's, it's inexplicable, it's supernatural. There's no human reasoning behind it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel the same way about what he's allowed me to experience. So at one end, you look around and be if God, if you never do anything else for me, I'm good. this family, I'm good. I'm like, good. It, I can't even believe that you have allowed yeah. me. And, I know a lot of us feel that way, but then we want to honor God by multiplying it, like the parable of the talents. How do you process that either spiritually or practically? Because sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. One day I wake up, I'll be like, I need to be content. I'm going to, I'm going to have a year of contentment. And then the next day it's like, I'm going to climb the mountain. I'm putting yeah. up pictures of eagles in my you know, office and everything like that. So I, I would love to just hear on whatever level you want how you balance that contentment ambition thing because both come from the mouth of God. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think they're maybe one and two or maybe two separate things. I think I'm, I'm always very aware and grateful for what he's given me. And I'm at peace if I don't sell another pair of shoes. I'm, I am at peace. Um, but he's also given me something else. He's also given me a drive. He's also given me these glimpses that I can't unsee. He's given me these visions that I, I can't not see. And so I'm, I am pressing towards the mark. I am pressing towards what I believe, what he's shown me. And I know that all I really have is like conviction. All I have is instinct. And if I feel convicted that this brand is supposed to do something, then that's all I have. You know, again, the Meek Mill, <laughs> it's quoting Meek Mill in Elevation. Is, you know, Apostle she's... Paul, Meek Mill, they're very similar prophets. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's like fear of God on me. All I got is faith. And the reality is like, man, that's like that. When he said that line, I was like, that's exactly it. You know, I'm just clothed in faith. Yeah, that's all I have is faith. And it doesn't make sense. And, and, and I know that where I'm going isn't going to make sense. And there's almost a little bit of peace in that because everything that he's done with my life hasn't made sense. So if it doesn't make sense, it kind of... Feels right. Yeah. It kind of it kind of makes sense, and so, yeah. Um, so yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm I'm happy with what he's given me, and um, I'm content. But he's also given me these glimpses, and uh, and I know that he didn't put those there um, uh, without reason. Yeah, because we might call it contentment, but maybe it's just fear fear of rejection, or you know, like the man who dug the hole and hid the talent. Mm. He had a view of God as harsh. I knew you were a harsh man. Remember, he's like, you know, I knew you were going to demand where you didn't scatter. And, and, uh, but it was really fear. He was afraid. And mm. so he dug it. You know, it takes a certain level of vulnerability, humility to put something out because then you subject it to judgment. Like as long as it's in your head and in your mind and in your dreams, you can love it. Yeah. But then you give it to people and it's theirs to do what they want. So do you read comments? <laughs> do you listen to critics? Do you allow that in your head? And what is the internal process that you push past to bring something from conceptual 
to here it is, I'm offering it to you, and you may hate it, but this is my offering. This is what I feel strongly about. How do you move in that conviction? Uh, I think I just got to that place. You know, I think we talked about it earlier, and I, my, my focus isn't so much in coming out with the best new idea first. It, my, my focus is more like on the in, intention of the message and the foundation of what I'm communicating. And I have, I have enough trust in my point of view that it's, it's good enough. And what separates it is the, is the message. And so for me, my focus is on, is on that, kind of like those movies that you know, we were talking <laughs> about with the bad acting and um, really just making sure the spirit is there, yeah. really making sure that um, what, what I'm doing is, 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 is glorifying him and I'm honoring all that he's given me. You mm-hmm. know, and I'm... I'm you know, all the, all the different people that come to work with me and, and, and for me that I'm honoring them and I'm, you know, doing what I can to get the best out of them. And, you know, I always go back to this Miles Monroe um, analogy about a car and all the different parts of a car and, you know, who's the leader of the car? You know, is it the $1,000 engine? Is it the battery? Is it the, the steering wheel? Um, and, the, you know, the answer in his message is, you know, everyone and no one. You know, it could... It could be the three dollar spark plug that goes out and the car doesn't move, and so I I want to honor everyone and, and encourage the creativity within my logistics department and my finance department and how are we using creativity and how are we um, going about the business in the same disruptive spirit that the collection is is um, is impacting the world. Um, and so I, th- I feel like I'm talking in circles. I don't know Not if I answered all. your question. This is amazing. Are y'all enjoying this? <laughs> Come on. I, I think it would be fun to hear also what's been the scariest moment of this whole ride. Like the moment where you were like, um, I think I'm done. You know, because I, I've had those myself. I'm sure you have. Yeah, I think we talked a little bit last night at dinner. It was just six collection when uh, we built this ambitious set and um, I had been so used to working with models and knowing how to direct them and get exactly what I want from them and paid a lot of money for Jared Leto, never worked with him before. I didn't know that I was going to be able to get what I could get from him to give me what I needed to get to tell the right story. Um, And I had just bought a house, like we moved into the house that same month and I was shooting the sixth collection that, that same month and fifth collection we delivered like seven months late and our clothes went on sale for the very first time after selling out and I just felt like like I can't do this you know I came home I had my wife pick me up from we were building this set I was like hey come pick me up like you may have to take me to the hospital I don't know you know what's happening but I'm I'm kind of losing control and um came home and to an empty house because we had just moved in no furniture and I just, you know, put on some praise music and just like bawled and just like kind of cried it all out for hours. My kids were around me and, um, you know, the Holy Spirit just showed up and like, um, not to say that he picked up the baton and finished the race, but like, you know, the next day we had to shoot the collection and like, you know, Jared was like the most consummate professional you know what I mean? Like he smashed every look and then I needed him for six hours to film and he was on it. The horse was going crazy and he just stood there like this, you know what I mean? Un- unfazed and like all these things that could have gone wrong did not go wrong. Um, but there was something about coming to the end of myself before that day that I thought was like such a good takeaway that I had put, you know, I had honored it and I put all my money into the, you know what I mean, into the mm-hmm. campaign. I mm-hmm. put all my mental and physical bandwidth and the only way that that was going to get shot and finished was if he showed up and he, he did in a, in, a, in a really big way. And so um, I, I, I think there, there, there's something to be said about the work that has to go into what it is that, that we do, you know? And mm-hmm. yeah, we... we we rely on him and we know that he's going to come in and, and fill the gap and, and be the way maker. But, you know, we, we got to do the work. We got right. to, we got to, we got to take ourselves to that place 
to allow him to show up. And we got to, totally. you know, um, take our hands off the, the rain, so to speak. So, um, yeah, take our hands off the rain. You know, like I was trying to preach this passage from the Old Testament years ago where Joshua needed the sun to stand still because he needed more time to defeat his enemies. And I was going to preach, you know, pray for God to make the sun stand still, what you can't do. And I almost felt like the Holy Spirit was like, read the verse before it. It said, <laughs> after an all night march. Mm. I was like, if you're going to pray for God to make the sun stand still, you better yeah, be you ready better to march. march all night. You better march all night. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. a lot of times, yeah, y'all can clap for that. <laughs> this, this pastor is preaching. So it, it is both. And I just wonder, is that letting go process for you? Is it coming waves like, I'm controlling it too tightly again. Uh, okay, if I keep going, and then, oh, there's the release, and then the, the ebb and flow of that. Do you experience that in seasons and in waves? Yeah, I kind of do. I mean, I'm, my, my wife will tell you I'm a control freak, so my, my, <laughs> my uh, human natural side has its own uh, deficiencies, and <laughs> one of those things is trying to be involved in controlling everything. And, um, a lot of that is like, probably against what, how God wants me to handle. Well, but things. you kind of have to, right? Like that's kind of the point of what you do as well at times. Yeah. And it's just trying to find that balance. Yeah. It's just trying to find that balance of like, all right, am I, am I, am I going hard in an honorable way or am I going I hard like from the wrong spirit? Am I going hard, you know, why am I going hard? Intention, you know what I mean? motive. What, what is the intention? Yeah. Are you yeah. are you getting dressed so you could be the freshest dude, or are you getting dressed so that you could be a reflection of the one that made you? Like, what's you know what I mean? So it's you, yeah. I, I was intimidated figuring out what to wear to interview you tonight. <laughs> I was like, what do you what do you wear? And also, that was so good what you just said. I didn't even think you realized how rich it was as you were saying it. It's like, am I reflecting God in this? Or am I trying to project something? And that makes all the difference because you might work twice as hard, but you understand you're just reflecting his light or you're serving or you're, you're being faithful with what he's called you to. And the energy is different, right? Mm -hmm. Versus how impressive can I be? Or, you know, like sometimes I wonder what your version of this is. I'll start preparing a sermon and I'll hear all of my old seminary professors in my head and I'll start preaching to impress them with how smart I am rather than like, hey, that guy on the third row is going through a divorce and he doesn't care how many Hebrew words you looked up for this little lesson. Preach Jesus Christ to that guy and preach hope. He needs oxygen. And so you have to make that shift, right? Like what pulls you to that place of, oh, now I'm trying to be impressive. What, what are those voices that get you out of that place of pure intention? How do you deal with it? Um, it's kind of what we talked about too. I feel like Everything that God has given me, the purpose of that is to glorify him. So if, if it's um, anything that I feel like I'm trying to promote myself in it too much, I know that it's not of him. And so it's, it's, it's you know, we're all human and we all have... Um, flesh and human desires and to be wanted and to be liked and um but we just have to always check why we want why we want those um why we want those uh boxes checked from from others you know what is the intention or what's the drive what's the drive behind that um and so i'm just constantly really making sure that you know what I'm doing is, is honoring him and knowing that everything that he's given me from my wife to my family to my business is all to be an example of his love and a reflection of his love. And knowing that we had a conversation with some really good friends that I was never, man was never meant to be famous, you know, and man can't handle fame. We weren't built for that. And uh, we weren't built to uh, produce our light. We were built to reflect his. Amazing. And so um, it's... And I, I, I think if you're really honest with yourself, you can, you can tell the difference and in, in what the intention of and, and why you're, you're, you're doing certain things. And, you know, yeah, the intention of what I'm doing is to 
sell clothes and is, is to provide for my family. And as a black man, my intention with the business is to show my son that, hey, you can do whatever it is that you put your mind to. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this thing as far as I can from a business perspective. And as a black man in America, I'm gonna, for the first time, and my nephews and my family need somewhere to work, it's not that they're gonna come work with me, but it's at least the options there. And a lot of people of color here, and you don't have to necessarily be of color, we just haven't ever had that. And so I'm driven to provide that. I'm driven to be an example for the kid that wants to be a good thing. I'm driven to, to be an example of what's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm competitive in my business. I want it to do well, but I know that God has given me this platform and I'm at the same time going to, you know, let his light shine. And, um, and I think you can do both. I think you can compete. I think you can uh, give him the glory. And I, and I think that, you know, I, I, I caught a lot of flack and like, you know, why does your stuff cost so much? And I'm like, you know, these are high level ideas that cost a lot to come up with. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like this, you know, and, and God has called me to excellence. I don't think he's called us to be l- low price. You know what I mean? I think, I think he's called us to, to do the best yeah. that we can with the ideas that he's given us. I you know, I'm not going to water down an idea that he's given right. me. I'm going to honor it to the, to the best way that, that I physically can at this moment with the resources that I have. So, um, um, so yeah, like I, I again, I, I lost my point, but um. I think I think you you're setting a great example, and we thank you for that and applaud you for that. That we don't have to have something second rate because it's for God. Yeah, I always used to hate that. You know, like we would put somebody maybe on the platform who couldn't sing, but we would be like, well, they can't sing, but it's for God. Well, it's like if it's for God, they should be able to do what they're trying to do. All right, God likes good music too, and <laughs> and it's not necessarily about judging certain things as being more sincere than others, but I love that you represent Christ in a way that goes toe-to-toe with anybody. Like, let's have somebody who is seeking God and filled with the Holy Spirit, creating something that exemplifies that, yes, fame is toxic. Fame is overrated, but it, 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 it doesn't mean that Christians have no place in the spaces of influence in our culture. And I'm so thankful that you're standing there and, you know, taking back the gates, uh, like the Bible says, and I I know it's not easy, but, um, I think we should talk about fame for a moment because, wow, what an insight. Humans aren't built for, for fame. And, uh, it's exactly right because the Hebrew word for glory, kavod means weight. Mm. Yeah. It's too heavy. Yeah, wait, it's too heavy. It's too heavy. We weren't built for that glory. Yeah. And um you've you've been with and it's the, and it, and, it, and, it's, and it, to me it's 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 not really a re, a a, re, a real weight. Like I feel like it's kind of false. You know what I mean? I feel like anybody can get hot, anybody can get famous. Anyone can, you know, have the attention of a lot of people for a short amount of time. Um and when you start to put your faith in that, um, it just gets dangerous because that could leave any time, you know. And then once once that's gone, then you know who who are you or what are you standing on? And so um, you know, and I think I've just been blessed to again come up with the parents that I had and watching my dad go from like you know manager of the year at Chicago White Sox in 2000 to not getting a call for a job interview a couple years later, you know, and just how the world can celebrate you and then you know, turn their, turn their backs on you. And if you look to the world for your significance, you know, it's a dangerous place to be because you're never going to find it in that, you know? And so um, I just, you know, I, 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 I try not to get caught up in, in it. And if I am going to have some light, I'm going to, hey, it's the God in me. It's Mary Mary. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it ain't me. You know what I mean? Half of them are pretending to know that reference. And laughing and half of them really do. It was Mary Mary, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Great song. I also want to celebrate you for using that in the way that you're choosing to use it on a Monday night tonight. I think most of us in the room have the awareness like you weren't looking for an invitation to do something on a Monday night with what God has given you and what you've accomplished. And uh, there are places you could have been and people that you could have been with to uh, make your name greater. And here you come, you know, hang out with us in church yesterday, uh, spend time with our teams, spend time with our kids last night. Like that's the upside of the influence that God has given you, right? That you can come in and maybe even somebody is here tonight who would normally never come to Evolution Church. I heard about that one. Oh, Jerry's coming. Yeah, man, save me a seat. I'll be there. At I'll be there at Evolution. I'll be there at the Evolution. <laughs> the one with the thing. With the, yeah, man, I'll come out there. They ain't got no cross on the building. Where's the cross? Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to take. I don't want to take any. I, I mean, I appreciate that. You know, because I know where your, your heart is on yeah. that. And, um, but I mean, selfishly, we came here to get fed, man. And you, you've, you've been, you've been feeding us, you know, me and my wife. And um, you know, I'm just humbled to be here, and you know, a, a little nervous to be, you know, on the stage with you as someone that feeds me. <laughs> um, but you know, we, we, we came selfishly to, to, to get fed, and to, um, I, I know in whatever it is that I'm saying that if I can touch someone, that that's the gas that I'm needing, and so I'm also coming here for the. For that gas as well, you know, and um, mm-hmm. this isn't a um, a charitable, <laughs> you know, act on our behalf. You know, it's just more like, you know, I'm I'm really humbled that you know Jacob and your team allowed us to use the songs in our campaign and allow us to spread your. Yeah, when did you decide set. to use atmosphere? You know, when I saw the atmosphere is changing now, it took me back. I was telling you last night to when the song was written. Mm-hmm. When was the moment where you decided? And for those who don't know. Um, Jerry's campaign used uh, Here's in Heaven. The atmosphere is changing now, and atmosphere played an integral part. So, you know, you never know where these little songs are going. We were writing that song for our church just to sing a song because we were doing a series called Surround. And, uh, and Chris Brown came in with, The atmosphere is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is. Changing. I was like, Oh, we are writing that tonight. We're turning it into the surround song. So we have to get the word, word surround in the course. Your love surrounds us. Okay, we got it. And uh, over, over the course of several days. And then to see um, that song give support to a vision God gave you, like I said last night, was so gratifying and fulfilling. But when did it hit you that that needed to be part of the support? I, I think it was a driving factor in me wanting to create an environment for my for my brand, you know, and and I wanted to create an atmosphere, an all encompassing. When you when you walk into this to the space, you you're immersed in this in this emotion, um, and um, um, that song was just I think was a subconscious, a driving force in me wanting to create this space, and you know I told my wife like. We, we didn't even know what product I was going to put in there. I just knew that I needed my following to come experience our brand in a way um, that they had never experienced it before. Um, and I, I wanted them to be able to walk in an atmosphere and, and be changed. And so, um, uh, I mean, that song was just so perfect. And even if I get into the creative side of it, a lot of the music that I mix in that playlist has this like 80s score, like synthy sound. And that song also has like that feeling in the beginning of that track. And so even the, the sound of it, if you take out the words, is still consistent with where I was from a creative point of view yeah. and what I wanted um, the people to feel when they walked in. And so... Um, we just really felt that it was important for people to understand kind of where these ideas are getting birthed from. And so that's why we created, which was the atmosphere. And um, that song was, uh, I think, a, you know, a driving factor in, in me deciding to do that and then being able to use a song again, you know, uh, just very humble that you guys graciously understood uh, the intention of why I wanted to use it, even though I'm not a church and I am selling clothes, but you, you knew the heart of why I wanted to use it. Um, and that really meant a lot to me. And so, um, you know, we're, we're here to 
you know, show gratitude and thanks. I want to ask one more thing, and then I would love, and I know everybody in the room would be honored if you would pray for the creativity that God has placed in each person in this room. There are things inside of you that, that God has put in you that are like seeds right now. If they're not watered and tended and brought into the presence of God, you'll never see what they could be. And, and bitterness is one of the things that will try to attack that seed. And uh, the need for validation, um, instant validation. You know, there's this period where you have to either hear from God or an idea comes and, and then you work toward it. And you have to be willing to not, not receive likes right away. You have to be willing to mm -hmm allow that thing some time to grow. So in an age of instant validation, where we all want people to confirm our idea before we've even worked on it, just because we thought of it and we're addicted to that in a way with social media, how do you, um, how do you persist with something that you believe God gave you when you're not seeing a lot of result from it, fruit from it, you're not getting a lot of accolades from it? What are those seasons like and what's the key for someone in this room who is uh, feeling that discouragement right now. I know you've been there and you've felt like giving up. And um, what would you say to them just from your heart, from, from the Holy Spirit and whatever God gives you for them? Uh, if, the, if the intention is pure to um, put your faith in the intention, put your faith in the why, the, the why of, of, of what you're doing will always um, bring you peace beyond the result of what you're doing. If you know why you're doing it, if you know who you're doing it for, there, there's, a, there's a different peace that comes with that that's beyond the thousand likes. There's a different peace that comes from that when you're doing what you're doing and saying, man, if I just reach the one, you know? And I, I think that, um, you know, that's why I, I get scared to um, compare like, worldly success, uh, success and significance um, by numbers and sales when we really don't know how God is using us. Absolutely. Or we really don't know, Absolutely. You know why he wants to work through us. It could so just be man. the one person. You, know, you, you, get, you get that one like, and that could be what God wanted to use you for. And if you're in touch with the intention of why you're doing it, then you're at peace with that. Wow. But if you're, you're doing it for the likes, you know, it's a dangerous place to be. You know? It's empty. It's, it's empty. It's shifting. Hosanna, Hosanna, crucify him. <laughs> you can't count on that. And, yeah. um, and, we, it, and it could be super fulfilling, but for like two seconds. So you, you know, you want to be really, we were saying. really yeah. fulfilled, really high. You know, it's like any kind of drug, you know, you got you to gotta come down, you know, and so it's like, if that's what you're chasing, then you can have that two, those two minutes of fame. But I think, you know, as as Christians, we're we're driven by this like eternal purpose that's beyond our understanding. And so when we put our faith in that, it, it makes it a lot easier to deal with those low times of when it seems like what you're doing is not working, and um, what you're doing is not getting any traction. Um, the peace comes in in the premise and, and the intention. I love it. Yeah, God was just showing me that fruit that remains idea. You know, I believe that's what he's doing through you. Um, I believe that that's what he desires to do through a lot of the people who are here tonight. And um, I think the intent of this, I think I speak for the team that puts this event together. By the way, this creative night is just, I'm a guest at it too. Um, I could shut it down if it, if it went bad. I have that, that authority. But... Um, I think the intent was just so you could have some space. I know that for a lot of us, uh, the best thing we could do after this time in this room is spend some time alone with God and let him interpret uh, what you've heard. I mean, you've heard about 12 things tonight that Jerry has said that one of them could change your life and one of them could, could direct your focus and really try to ask God, um, what is that one thing and how does it apply to me? Because he will speak to you like that. Um, he, he may not download in your spirit a design that goes on to create an entire fashion revolution, or he may, but it may not be about that. It may be about something that he's put in you that you don't even recognize. So 
I would love if you, if you would be comfortable, uh, Jerry, just praying for people who, um, who needed to hear that one thing that God gave you tonight. Maybe praying for their, for their intention. We've talked about that so much. Or maybe praying for their, their boldness to step past fear and, um, and praying that God would also surround them with some people uh, that they would be able to have, a, have a support, enough support for the seasons when, when they feel too weak and they need to be carried. So I've given you a lot to pray about. I'm probably, yeah, probably overdoing this. Say, but just pray. You, would you, would you, you pray was the you question. Pray, Pastor. I've, had the, I've had the best time talking to you. Hadn't this been amazing tonight? I really have loved it. Father God, we come to you, we, we praise you, we thank you for this opportunity, we thank you for bringing us all here, Father, and we, we know that you are the uh, father of creativity and that you are the one that uh, creates without reference, Father God, and we just praise you and thank you that um, you show us, Father, what you need to show us, Father, that you give us the glimpse, that you give us the, um, the vision of where you want to take us, Father, and you give us the faith to, Father, to follow you. Thank you, Lord. Um, to reach that destination, Father God. Yes, Lord. Um, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for, for bringing us here to Charlotte. Um, and I just pray for everyone in this room, Father, that they would... Uh, be open to to hearing from you and 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 following you, Father God, and that we know that um, creativity is involved in everything that we do, um, and and that you're involved in in all that 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 we touch, Father. And we just praise you, Father, uh, for the strength that's that's needed um, for us as we go our, our our respective directions, Father God, to 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 follow what it is that you put before us. Um, and we just praise you and, and, and thank you in all these things. God, we thank you for Jerry. We thank you for um, the way that your spirit has flowed through him tonight. But we ask that you would just refresh him and replenish he and Desiree. I pray that they would, um, that they would in, enjoy this next season of their, their life and their marriage and their parenting, and that you would provide clarity for the things that now only seem as a silhouette or an outline, that you would fill that in and that you would energize them with the strength and continue to purify them through the work of your spirit, through the fire of your spirit, continue to purify them. Uh, anything they may be battling, any fears that they may have, any, any shortage that they may feel, we just declare that you shall supply all of their needs as they glorify you and, and reflect you to the world. Just uh, keep your hand on this man, this couple, this family. Uh, we know that you will. And we ask that you would even surprise them just stepping into this next season and a new year and, and just the, the solidity of it, uh, the settledness of it, and uh, just the confidence that comes with, with knowing that a calling is being fulfilled. Thank you for sharing this gift with us tonight, Lord. Uh, bless them beyond imagination. Uh, we come into agreement in Jesus' name, with everything that you've spoken over their life. Uh, bless them uh, beyond measure. Ephesians 3.20 style, above all that we could ask or think to say into a microphone or pray out loud, do it for your glory through Christ Jesus in them now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Jerry Lorenzo, everybody. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.